We're here with Marcos from Motorsport Connections Moorabbin and today he's going to show us his cool little Mazda 808. So how long have you had the car for? Uh, I've owned it for about four and a half years now. Yeah, yeah. I bought it as a naturally aspirated stock 808 with a four cylinder in it and originally I had plans to just get it running as it is with yeah. a four speed gearbox and just cruise it around. And a four banger. Yeah, four banger with you know chrome bumpers and just yeah. uh, and just cruise around. No yeah. no speed obviously with that 60 horsepower engine. <laughs> so it must have been the last 808 left in Melbourne that didn't have a rotary or It actually wasn't uh, in Melbourne. I actually, yeah. you know, their rarity. Yeah. Uh, I found it in Tarmore, New South Wales. Okay. Just some dude that had no more time for it. His uh, old man and, and him had painted it and, uh, and kept it in really good nick. And uh, I was really lucky to, to have found it. And yeah, I do think it's one of the last, last lingering original bodies, you know, with a four cylinder. Is this in the it. original color? Original color, yeah. yeah, like I said, just a coat of paint yeah. over it. Original interior, with the exception of the seats. And yeah, this is the condition I found it in. I changed wheels and, and drivetrain in it. So you were saying earlier how you got into the rotaries was you bought another donor car. Yeah, okay, so this car was going to be a four banger and then I changed my mind and said, you know, I want to feel a little bit uh, more acceleration than that and uh, and said, you know, how can I afford to put a rotary in this? It, it's pretty expensive doing um, projects and uh, I found a donor car, a, a wagon with a Series 5 RX-7 FC engine in it, turbocharged, ECU, a diff that would run in my car, everything that was changed, everything, you could everything that I could change yeah. over. Just the body on this car was much better than the yeah. other one. Yeah. So I decided to uh, take on that as a project, save a little bit of money that way and, and, uh, and build it from, um, from, another, from another car. So did it just have like a Mazda, high, Mazda type turbo on it or? Yep, yep, yeah. so it had a stock Series 4 turbo with um, a high flowed front wheel. Okay. Did you ever race it like that? I did. So I started off uh, racing it with a set of 14 steel van rims on the back, that high flowed turbo and that Series 5 engine. And I think I was I was running 12s for a long time and, and trying to crack an 11. So yeah, that, that, was, that was my goal. And it was a really fun car. It ran really well. It was on 11 or 12 PSI. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Power to weight rules, doesn't it? That's right. It's yeah. not a whole heap of power. 950 kilo car and a little bit more with a driver in it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't need much power to get it going. So what did you do after that? Explain your upgrade path. All right, so we went from the Series 5 engine, which was an import engine. It was unopened. I uh, didn't know the history behind it either. I went from that engine with a high flow turbo uh, running. Yeah, I cracked an 11 with that, with that setup. Um, thought I'd stop there and never really does. Um, and I bolted a Garrett turbocharger to the side with an external gate. And that got me, where'd that get me into? That got me into the really low 11s. And uh, one day we so were- at that, Sorry, at that point you're yeah. still running a Series 5 five speed? Yeah, yeah. so I've, at that point I've still got a Series 5 five speed, Hilux diff and, and just the turbocharger upgrade. I've still got a really old Microtech in it and just a really simple rotary classic setup. Yeah. After running 11s for quite a long time, I gave it a little time to, uh, to uh, sink in that I wanted to go faster <laughs> and um, decided to do an engine upgrade. I pulled out the Series 5 engine, sold it off because I had another engine being built to help with downtime. And then when I got it back, I was expecting to just bolt on stock inlet manifolds and everything back on. I sold the old engine as a block. Um, I find out from the guys at Promaz that I'd been upgraded to a FD engine. <laughs> so you gave them a Series 5 engine and they gave you back a Series 6 engine. I got back a Series 6 yeah. engine, which I wasn't... You can't com really complain about I wasn't that. complaining at all. We yeah. did a little bit of a... Uh, wheel and deal there and, and, I, and I got an, a really big upgrade so I was, I was very happy with the guys there. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So now what, what's the current setup on it now? So the current is setup like, is, is it, what have you done internally to the engine? Internally it's, it's, it's quite stock, this car was always built to be on petrol yep. and, and not a lot of horsepower, not a lot of boost through it so uh, internally it's just built with a mole port, it's got a set of aftermarket seals, yep. E&Js. Oh, so, yeah. So other than that, it's got a Mazda water seal kit through it and that's it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just built from Promaz and, and, um, and just done well. Yeah, and what turbocharger's on it now? Uh, that's a, well it's a bit of a bit of that, that turbocharger and I want to give um, somebody a plug for that too. It's a GD35, so a 3582, but it's been modified on the inside. It's got a, a larger rear wheel and a larger front wheel and Ben at Procharge does that and I'm really happy with the results. It just fits in the standard T3 turbine housing, 
Uh, it's a 106. Yep. And it bolts up as per my old setup used to, except it makes a lot more power, it's a lot more responsive, and it's just a, a really nice high flowing turbo for these little rotary and engines that flow a lot. On about 18 pounds? Yeah, it, it, it steps up from about 18 to 20, depending on, on, on the day and the ambience. It could, on a nice cool night, it, it, can, it can go a little bit higher. Yeah. And interestingly, you haven't, like a lot of people, made the switch to E85, which I kind of like. You've kept it on pump fuel. Yeah. But how are you doing that? Okay, so rotaries on pump fuel don't like much more boost than about mm. 14 pound. Look, everybody's got their ways to tune yeah, them and their yeah. theories, but that, that's what we've learned and we're pretty conservative. To combat that, with a little bit more boost or to give it a little bit more boost and not change over to E85 because this car's only got a 40 litre fuel tank yeah. in it. And I mean, E85 can just be, uh, you know, really uh, high consuming rates. So we've just put a little bit of water methanol injection in it. Is that a snow kit or something like that? Or something no, I, I kind of built it myself. I use a, a few parts from, from companies in the States and they all really use the same brand pumps and things like that. So I just pieced together the kit myself to suit me. And obviously, um, Motorsport Connections, your bread and butter is really hose and fittings, isn't that's it? Right, so that's, doing that's, that actual stuff is really quite simple for you guys. Correct, correct. I, I do this on a daily basis. So I look up parts and, and, and source parts for people. So that's what I wanted to do and, and, and customise it to suit myself. So I bought a pump that had the threads that I wanted and the capabilities that I wanted so I could plumb it the way I wanted with, with our bits and pieces. So run through some of the EFI, the fueling side of the car and, and ignition and what you're doing there, because obviously uh, you've replaced everything, being such an old car. Yeah, that's right. Um, even an FD engine it has um, side-fed injectors, which don't really work with um, a lot of options out there for, for changing over injectors and fuel rail kits that are available for these cars. So this has got a really early model Microtech in it. They just seem to work for rotaries. They, they're not going to they're not going to get you anything fancy, but but they just do the job. And it works on this car well. And it works on this yeah. car well. I'm really happy with it, and I'm lucky to have a really good tuner that, that knows them back to front. Um, the guys at Promaz, uh, you know, they've only ever done this car a couple of times, and if they've ever had to put it back on, it's just because I've upgraded something and changed something. Other than that, I get it back and it's faultless. Yeah, yeah. And being staying on petrol, you don't have to put huge injectors in it and... No, I think it's got, no, I know it's got factory yeah. uh, Series 5 um, primary injectors yeah. and it's got 1200cc um, secondary injectors. Yeah, yeah, nice. nice. Yeah, and, and that's, that's all it uses. You ran a personal best a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks ago we ran a 10.37 with this car at 133 mile an hour. <laughs> So it's only on a 225 straight radial. 225 radial and, and with an upgraded gearbox too. So okay. we're not running that Series 5 Mazda box anymore. This has got a, it's still a H pattern. It's a Supra R154 okay. turbo box. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty uh, sought after now, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Getting a bit harder to get than they used to be able to. Yeah, that's right. Well, second hand ones are few and far between, yeah. um, but they are they are still available if you if you look hard. So is that a rebuilt box? Yeah, there's a little mod that you have to do to them to make them more efficient than they were. They're a big sturdy box, but back in the day they, they would break them because of um, a first gear thrust washer and a, and a retaining plate. They handle maybe another 100 or 150 horsepower okay. with, with modding them like that. Yeah, yeah. just simple things. So yep. uh, what sort of clutch are you running? It's not a twin plate, so it's still drive. I wanted to keep the drivability of this car and not make it a, an aggressive car or a hard to drive car. Anybody can hop in it and just take it for a spin in it. Does it run an internal slate? No, no, this this still doesn't run an internal slave, but it will be a mod that we will we, yeah. we will be doing in the future. It just lightens it up and makes yeah. it a lot more um, a lot more feedback to the driver. Uh, this still runs the factory um, Mazda bell housing and a factory fork. And you're still running the same Hilux. No, <laughs> we've upgraded the diff too. Um, uh, drag racing takes a toll on it parts. Does, yeah. The car would be faultless if I didn't take it drag racing, but unfortunately when you take it to the track and you and dump the clutch... The manuals are pretty hard on rear end. Manuals are very hard on the cars and, and hey, it's no secret, you break stuff when you go dra drag racing and uh, I broke stuff and we fixed it and, and we barely had any downtime and we've now got it to a pretty manageable state where we can drag race it and, and street drive it as long as we, uh, as, we keep, as long as we keep the street driving at a higher level than the drag racing. Yeah. Is there anything else you're going to do at this end of the car? 
Look, you're I, sort of happy the way it is? I'm really happy with the with the way it is. I don't really want to change anything. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm definitely trying to dial back my my drag racing yeah. trips because you know the car does what it does and and uh, and I don't need to go prove it every time because I keep breaking stuff. So I've seen a lot of ca like you get to a point like this and if you want to say go another half second faster, you've got to replace everything and all of a sudden you haven't got a reliable car. Yeah, you're right. Like that 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 that's a that's a fair point too. So for me to go another half a second faster or or to get into you know that next um, mm. bracket in the single digits to the nines, it's a big deal. You know, people don't realise that dropping from a 10.3 to a 9.9, it's 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 well, a lot of money. Up, you've got to pick up 10 mile an hour. Straight 10 mile away. an hour. And it, then you've got to be able to use it. 10 mile an hour is a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of parts. Yeah. So. Uh, speaking of cool things, you were showing me that oiling system you got in the back. Do you want to yeah. run yeah. through that? Yeah, I'll give you a look at that. So give us a rundown on what, what this is all about, because a lot of people don't understand how Mazas work with pre-mix and the oiling system. All right, so the, the basic run through, and I hope I get this right, is a stock Mazda engine runs with oil injection. It gets a little bit of sump oil injected into the rotor housings to help lubricate the motor and keep it cool. And we delete that for simplicity and for efficiency. And what you need to do is pre-mix oil in your fuel. Now there's a lot of guys out there with <clears throat> a bucket in the back of their car, a couple of old rags, a beaker, and they're trying to uh, calculate how much fuel to oil ratio they need to mix. You'd see them at the, the service calculator. station yeah. pouring pouring yeah. into the petrol tank yeah. and just yeah. guessing and yeah. I've tried to simplify things and I've um, I've bolted to my search tank box there a little oil canister. It's got markings on the inside and it lets me, you know, 10, 20 litre or 30 litre increment ratios to, to, to filling points for the oil for how much fuel I'm filling up. And uh, yeah, I just crack a tap and it, and it bleeds the um, the oil directly into the return line for the um, search tank. Yeah, okay. Yeah, That's so fine. it just washes the oil down, yeah. gets it um, nice and mixed with the fuel, and then by the time it's done a couple of cycles with the pre-pump into the search tank, um, it's well and truly mixed well in there. Fuel Pro search tank under there. I've, I've bolted a box to it so that you can use this car space Per, as per normal yeah. and for legalities too yeah. I mean you don't want a fuel system just smell and stuff yeah in there. it stinks and and you really don't want a fuel system exposed in an open cabin car like that you don't even want one in a sedan but um, worse in a, in a in a wagon or, or in a hatch being on petrol are you running one pump or you've got two pumps in that or it's just got one pump one it's just pump. got one wall row pump yeah. and and a, and a pre-pump that picks up fuel from the main tank into the surge tank <laughs> I just noticed earlier, mate, I like how you've still got the uh, old style wheels, I guess. You haven't got some FR19 Simmons. And yeah. Just, the small 15 you know, inch wheels, 14, 15 inch wheels look great on small old cars. Yeah, the brake kit that ended up going on this car was a Series 4 5 Mazda FC brake kit and it had a 4x110 pattern. And, you know, I wasn't that fussed because of that exact reason. I like I like that period look. That um, And the globes or the um, challenges suit it quite well. In my opinion, you know, cars are style and taste and they've got to suit, they've got to suit what you like. The turbo, she doesn't feel too laggy. No, that, that, that little combination with the T3 back, um, it works well. It's a, it's a compromise of, you know, we might be sacrificing a little bit of horsepower on the top end, um, but you gain a lot of drivability and... That's not, and where, that's not where you drive a streetcar. Yeah, I it's mean... The, it's the, to be honest, it's the mid-range is what you want in a streetcar. I, I think response and mid-range is pretty important in a streetcar. So if you can if you can gain a little bit of top end with um, the right combination, uh, you're winning. Yeah. What sort of uh, RPMs are you doing sort of at freeway speed, say at 100 in this? At 100, we're probably doing um, 27, under 3. Yeah, it's pretty good. Under 3,000, yeah. And you race this full exhaust? Uh, look, I, I have a I little know, side pipe I that I can use. Pipe, yeah. yeah, yeah, so look, um, and, and look, to be honest with you, it makes the same amount of power and proven on the dyno um, with or without the exhaust. It's just way easier to drive with a side pipe. Yeah. I mean, driving this car, I've got no, I've got no um, two-step that I use. Well, I do have it uh, activated, but I don't activate it for racing. Um, I've got no gauges or no dash on this thing. It's all original if you have a look. Um, so I go off for of feel, and the side pipe, um, it gives you that feel. You can, you can uh, yeah. rev the engine and, and know where you're at. It's 
especially if you're racing a loud car or you're next to a loud car, uh, this thing with the full exhaust, you, c you can't hear it on. It's I was going to say, once you put your helmet on... It's a pretty quiet car yeah. and you just don't know where you're at with the rev range. Like, you can hit the rev limiter early or, or over rev it or, this, or under rev it. This is actually way more quiet than I thought it would be. Like you were saying, I mean, a turbocharger is effectively a muffler. That's on, right. On a Mazda. Yep. And it can get pretty loud next to the Aspirator. And on top of that, we designed the, the, the exhaust system on this car to be um, to be really hush, really quiet. Um, it, is, it is three inch, is it? It's three inch all the way, but it has two mufflers uh, and a cat. Yeah. You've had a few other Mazdas, Marcos? Yeah, I, I had them in my younger days, actually. I, I started this whole performance venture um, working for a reputable um, rotary mechanical workshop in New South Wales. And uh, my first one was an FC RX-7, Series 4. Um, and then I had a little RX-3 sedan, and they had um, a turbocharged engine in it. And then I got out of it for a little while and, and raced motorbikes and did some other stuff. And yeah, about four years ago, got back into uh, building them and, and this was it. Yeah, do you think you'll hang on to this one for a while? Yeah, I, I wanna hang on to this one. It's, it's become part of the family and uh, and I really enjoyed the process and I've, uh, I've fallen in love with the car. So Marcus just took me for a spin in the 808. She's a nice little sort of rig. <laughs> not too slow, not too fast. Puts the power down mint. That turbo setup's good with the radials. And uh, yeah, just wanted to thank you, mate, for no today. No worries, I'm glad you enjoyed the drive. Awesome, that cheered me up to uh, get another Mazda. <laughs>